Well, today on Nation, the window cleaning podcast, we're going to be talking about how to build an ad. So if you have done ads, or you've never done ads, or you just want to hang out with me, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you're here. You are here. I, uh, <laughs> I'm messing myself up already in the beginning of the show uh, by just that. But either way, thanks for hanging out. If it is your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully you enjoy it. Hopefully it doesn't suck. Uh, if it doesn't suck, go back, watch, or listen to all the episodes you possibly can. Make sure to share, comment, thumbs up on YouTube. Watch and do it all. You know every cliche thing. Go back, binge it. I love to see those numbers going as high as they are. So if you are listening, make sure to share it because why not, right? If you are one of the cool kids, where's the sticker? Right there. The certified cool kid. What's up? You are the type of person who will watch every episode. You'll thumbs up this video if you're on YouTube right now. And more importantly, you will buy your supplies through me. Shameless plug. What up? What up? It's because of you that I get to have these fancy haircuts that they cut my hair too short. So, hey, thank you so stinking much. Uh, I do genuinely appreciate you guys ordering so absolutely much. You don't even know. I see names come across um, that don't always order with me. I want them all, but no, really. If you guys are watching and you want to do like a virtual high five of awesomeness, please do let me put your order in. My number is 862 three one two two zero two six if you ever forget my number you can always check it's online but it's also on the video on youtube so check it out eight six two three one two two zero two six shameless plug time but that's how i make my cheddar and how i live how i live is by uh you guys putting orders so on top of that you can also be an absolute epic cool kid which is somebody who watches every episode, of course. Thumbs up on the videos, you comment, you more importantly order from me, and you are a subscriber to America Widow Cleaner Magazine. By the way, if you haven't seen it already, which you really haven't because the post office is absolutely horrible, the next issue, this is the March issue, and it is with Sorbo, the man himself. Uh, that issue is actually at the post office already. We changed post out mail houses, whatever. We changed the way we posted them we send them we poly bagged them. we did a whole bunch of changes that hopefully make the magazines come out absolutely on time because i hate the post office anyway there you go longest intro ever i do apologize three minutes not that bad i guess but today we're talking all about building an ad how to build an ad why do some ads work and some ads don't so like what goes into an ad because it's time to start advertising we're going absolutely gangbusters. You guys seem to be going absolutely gangbusters, which, by the way, high five to you. I've had so many people telling me about how their year is. It makes me so happy. I literally, like, I don't get people who don't get happy from other success. I love, love other people's success, genuinely. Like, if somebody comes to me and they say, uh, dude, I doubled my company this year. That is phenomenal, man. I am absolutely happy in my heart of hearts because of that. These people who hate online and just like want to bash people, I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm positive. But I do really, really enjoy it. So if you're doing awesome, comment down below or text me, 862-312-2026. Tell me you're doing awesome because it just makes me feel good. And uh, yeah, it's like my drug. Anyway, but we're talking about building an ad. Now, there's a few things with building an ad that sometimes people forget. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about. But first off, let's talk about ads in general. There's a ton of them. Facebook ads, Google ads, there are uh, print ads, there are uh, newspapers, billboards, television, there's magazines. There's You could literally be in everything from golf scorecards to bowling, card score, bowling alley scorecards. But not all of them make sense, by the way. Going off on a little things, Jersey's tip of the day. Do not advertise on a uh, golfing card. Don't advertise on that. Don't get put on a bowling scorecard. 
don't do that. I know it's cheap and you're going to be on a whole bunch of them. And look at all those people and everybody who golfs has money. They have, that's why they're golf. No, because here's the thing. If somebody's having a great time golfing, they're not looking at the scorecard. If they're having a terrible time, they're focused on the scorecard and your uh, information is on the back of the scorecard where they're not going to look anyway. I'm telling you, you're not going to have an ROI on that. You're not even going to talk to Pete. Name something. I was on, I, I have been on everything. I've been on placemats. You ever been to a small restaurant where all the placemats are? I've been on that. That actually worked surprisingly well because the restaurant that I was at, there was three restaurants that were all owned by the, or kind of the same mats went to each one with different logos. And they were all like old person restaurants. So I did get some good leads on that. But it was also like next to nothing. And I bartered for window cleaning too. And it, anyway, but every single year, like four or five times a year, somebody posts something on anything about the the advertising. Don't do it. It's not even an ad, man. All that is is your logo and a number on the back of a golf card where somebody's not looking because they're focused on their score or they're just angry at the world, right? People just want to drink while they play golf and not suck. That's all they want. They don't want to buy things. So anyway, focusing on how to build an ad, this is the key thing because... I know people, and I'm not calling you out, and I apologize if you're watching. The people I'm thinking of aren't even really watching. But people have said, I have done ads. Ads just don't work. They don't work around here. The people, my customers, they don't want to see ads. They don't even want to see you in it. It's all word of mouth. But ads don't work. You're absolutely 100% full of crap. Full of do. 100%. Ads work all the time. All the time. Ads are working on you every part of your day. Every part of your day. You're watching this show right now and you're like, no, there's nothing because we don't monetize. So there's no ads that pop up, right? Look behind me. WCR, boom. There's a a, a Windex. (laughs) There's Black Diamond Rubber. There's Sorbo. You know how hard it is to do this? There's Zero. There's Tucker. There's uh, Samurai, which is Aztec. There's all that stuff on there. Those are technically little ads. They're logo placements, right? So you're getting bombarded with all this stuff all day long, and you don't even know it. Facebook, people go, how do you advertise on Facebook? I've never seen an ad on there. You see a lot of ads. There's probably more ads than regular things. Just look at Facebook. Look at the sidebar to the right. Look at your story. Look at your timeline. Look at all that stuff. There's ads in all that. You know that word promoted? That means ad. So... You're always having people getting bombarded by ads. Your ad has to stand out. There's a few things you can do in an ad to make it stand out. By the way, if you think ads don't work, tell me down below the ads don't work. I just want to see who you are. <laughs> now that I say that, no one will do that. Because they'll be like, oh, you said that you're full of do. I'm not doing that. But ads do work. What happens is people do an ad that they like. They do an ad that they go, wow, I'm so proud of myself because I did it myself. Look at all this money I saved. I did it myself on Microsoft Paint or whatever. And then they put it out there and nobody calls. It's because your ads are garbage. If your ads look terrible, they don't work. If you send your ad, it could look absolutely amazing, but you send it at the wrong time, guess what? Your ads won't work. If you send it wrong, your ads don't work. Listen, I will tell you 100% that I am not my target market. Not. I'll never hire somebody to do window cleaning. I won't. I'll do it myself, if anything. And this is not that important to me, right? I am not out there searching for it. I'm not my target market. So why does it matter if I like my ad? This is where people kind of come into the first part. They look at it and they go, man, I built this. Look at this thing. Hey, check it out, hun. Hey, mom, look at this. And they show this ad and they're really proud of it because they made it. But it doesn't speak to who they're trying to speak to, Right? Somebody who's experienced in business versus somebody who's new, the big difference is that somebody who's experienced has an avatar. What I mean by that is they have a person, a shell. They can close their eyes and see their exact target customer. Why do you do that? I have lots of customers. Yes, but your target customer, I know an age. I know a male or female. I know how many kids they have and how many dogs they have, what kind of house they have and what neighborhood they have, type of job. I know what they're into. They like coffee. I know that they like coffee and I know the type of vehicles they're probably driving. I know all of them. 
I know that my target avatar drives an SUV because minivans aren't cool. I know that. I know that they have disposable income. I know what they do. I know that because I've done the research. Now, when you're doing an ad, I don't care about Jersey, right? You shouldn't care about you. I don't care about that. If I do an ad and go, man, this is awesome, I don't care. That's wrong. What I need to do is see if my avatar likes it. Now, how do you do that? You gotta split test ads. Now, split testing ads is expensive and it sucks and you really have to watch the, the, um, the comeback. You have to make sure that you're tracking everything. It's a whole big thing, right? But the only way to find out if an ad works is to do split testing. Now, I'm gonna say something that I always kind of talk about and uh, it's past us. I get razzed for this a lot. Uh, and it is basically putting out a um, bigger company than us. I always talk about Coca-Cola, McDonald's, but these are super successful companies that have systems in place that nothing is missed, nothing. There's somebody in Coca-Cola that knows absolutely everything there is to know. There, there's if you got all those people together, there's somebody in the company that knows where the, 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 you know, old boxes are stored. Like there's people who know every aspect of it, all the way from the actual formula to the ingredients, to where they get the ingredients, to when they make change, there's people in there that know that, right? So they make a lot of sense to kind of focus on. And I have to say, when McDonald's comes out with a new burger, you know, the Mick corn dog or whatever it ends up being, right? They split test that with other audiences. How do you do that? You get people in and go, hey, you want to be in a, a, a group, um, a focus group for McDonald's? You try some new food? Yeah. We just got to be honest. That's like, oh, I'll be honest. Guess what? Now you got a room of 10, 12 people that you can put anything in front of and their job is to tell you if it's good or they like it. If they came to me and said, hey, I got uh, uh, a focus group for McDonald's. You want to be in it? I would say no, because I don't eat McDonald's. There's nothing wrong with McDonald's. If you like McDonald's, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's not my restaurant. I don't eat there. I don't eat fast food. So then the other side of that is, is that I'm not their target market. So the people who do say yes are people who like McDonald's, right? They find the average Joe, their avatar. They find that person. They go, hey. You want to try some new things? McCorn dogs, pretty good. And then they sit them down in this room that is either behind glass or being videotaped, and they put items in front of them. Here's the new McCorn dog. And it comes out in a blue package with red writing. It says McCorn dog on it with an M for McDonald's. And they eat it. And you're thinking, well, yeah, uh, do they like it? Does it taste good? Because that's what they're looking for. Not as much. They're looking for people will buy it. They don't care if it tastes good. They want, is people going to, are people going to buy it? And are they going to rebuy it? And the only way that they do that is with the experience and feelings that come along with it. So does the blue box matter? Okay. Next group, another 12. They do these split tests all the time. There's always focus groups going on in these big companies. There's always with all different things and existing things. Now those people come in, they got a ride package with blue writing. Mick corn dog, Mick, um, try it out and it's delicious. Right? Like, oh, thanks a lot. Thanks for your focus. And they send them out. Next one comes in. Now it's a foam package. Now it's a sleeve. Now it's a whatever. They've tried every type of packaging they could possibly do. It's called the Mick corn dog or this other one's called the doggy do. This one's called the uh, delicious dog strip thing with a stick I, whatever they've tried all the different names they've tried all the different things now to split test why they test so often is that they will do all of them in blue with red writing how do people like that okay we got one with blue with red writing called the mccorn dog we got one that's blue with red writing called the doggy do they have all the different names and they change one piece to the puzzle every single time well, when it comes out, they go, well, how'd you feel when you saw that? What did it make you think of? People are like, it's a corn dog. It made me think, man, I'm kind of hungry to eat a corn dog. No, people go, oh, man, I don't know. It's kind of Superman-y, you know? Like, made me think Superman. What? A corn dog makes you, no, the blue and red. 
what is Superman? Is he blue and red or is he red and yellow? Or is he red, yellow, and blue? Or is he blue, yellow, and red? Right? What do people associate? Now, you get all this feedback and you go, hey, guess what? People were really positive on that blue and red with the, uh, they really liked the Mick Corndog name. They thought that was just adorable. It was great. Okay. But now we split test all red ones, right? But now it's blue with the McCorndog name. They found out that they like the McCorndog name. They take McCorndog and they put it on a blue package with red writing. They put it on a red package with blue writing, a blue yellow package with green writing. They're all these different ones. Now they change one other piece and it is the color of packaging. Now they find out what they like. You see where it's going. I'm babbling. But that's how split testing goes. So when you're doing pieces, you need to either A, get pieces that are split tested, which you can really only find those, and I may be wrong, you can maybe find them other places. So just tell them down below so people know if you're watching on YouTube. But uh, WCR has uh, templates that are available that have been split tested. Chris has split tested those with his own business to find out which one worked. But now when people go out there and go, hey, I got $10,000, man, I just bought $10,000 fill in the blanks Woo. okay uh how do you know those are great uh, dude i made this man this ad is dope look at it who how did you split test it who did you ask nah man look at it man my mom i talked to my mom she's like a chick she was like dude it's nice yeah huh that's all super fine and dandy but you've just made all of your money you put it in one basket hoping that one basket's right and then when it doesn't go man i spent ten thousand dollars and it didn't work you didn't figure out what would have worked. You just went up to a random ATM. You pushed four buttons. And if no money comes out, you go, well, that ATM's broken. No, you did the wrong combination. The only way to find out what combination it is is to hit four numbers, every combination of every one, to find out what the pin is. Right? So with that all being said, that is split testing. You have to split test. If you're not finding something split tested, go to somebody like At Cost Print. Steve and Jillian at At Cost Print. I know they're a WCR uh, type company. Uh, they're awesome. They're absolutely amazing to deal with, but you can do a 10,000 piece thing, whatever, door hangers, postcards, mailers, EDM, whatever you want, and split it into $2,500, 2,500 piece parts. You change a piece, you change a piece, you find what works. Oh, the red with the blue writing works. Boom. That's the next one. Now we change the writing, the fonts. Oh, this one's the best one out of all of them. Boom. We keep red and blue, but we change the font and you make this piece so absolutely perfect that it produces money for you it's an atm you basically put a dollar in worth of postcards and it gives you two dollars out when you can focus your ads like that that's how you win that's split testing though you have to do split testing it's expensive and it sucks it takes years to split test properly send something out what works what doesn't didn't work good put the next one out what works what doesn't put the next one out what works what doesn't put the next one out if you're doing eddm it's even harder because you have to send to the same exact people and there's different variances. So it's really, really hard, but split testing is huge. Colors matter. As much as you don't think colors matter, there are buying colors. Look at different types of companies, what they represent and what their color scheme is. You know why people spend like $100,000 on a logo for their company and you're like, what? It's a shape. Look at the Nike swoosh. Yeah, it's worth a lot now. But was it ever worth a lot in the very beginning? Day one, was it worth a lot? No. But somebody may have spent a lot of money. They focused on what it was. Now, that one might be so old that it didn't come into that. Basically, somebody put it out and eh. But they've worked on colors. What colors work? What doesn't work? What sucks? What works, right? You go back and forth and back and forth, and that is how people that do logos for a living... They change one little thing. Oh, this little image in the background's got three leaves, but it should have four. People really like that. It just makes them feel a little bit better. It's the weirdest thing I'm telling you, but that's how ads go. One big thing that you need to remember when you're doing ads in general, if you're sitting down and writing them, making them, designing them, figuring them out, they have to, have to be the exact same ad across platforms. Now, the easiest way you could possibly do is to do this, but a lot of people don't. They make different things like, oh man, this is cool. I'll maybe put that on YouTube, Facebook. I'll do that one on uh, Craigslist. I'll do that. You can't. What you do is you design one ad. You split test the crap out of it. And then when it works really, really well, you make it under every platform. You take that same ad, that same thing, 
and you like shrink it and you put it under you know one 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 avenue you shrink it into a, 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 a gosh instagram put it on instagram you make it a little wider now. It's on Facebook. You put it on this, it's on this. You put it on this, it's on this. You keep going back and forth and back and forth. And eventually, you have the same on all platforms. People start recognizing that they've seen it somewhere, but subliminally. It's the reason that EDDM works when you send it multiple times to the same person. It's not that somebody sees the first postcard and goes, I don't know what that is. They see the next one, they're like, eh, I don't think I know what that is. The next one, they go, ooh, these guys. What they do is they get it. And it feels familiar. The third time they're getting it, they're like, oh yeah, these guys, I've, I've heard of them. I, man, I, I think my mom uses them. I can't, they don't know, they can't put it, but they've seen enough of it. It's the reason that McDonald's is slapped on everything. It's the reason stickers like this exist and are cool. It's because the more you can see somebody's stuff, their logos, their whatever, the more you can associate with them, the more you connect with them. And that's where cross-platform is key. It's a flow. It's a style. It's, it's taking something and making it familiar, even when no one in the world is going to look at your logo and go, oh, I know that guy. Those guys. Like the logo recognition is super hard in a smaller business. Eventually, maybe people will know. But more than likely, they're reading it. If you change the logo but had the same name, they'd probably say, oh, I know those guys. I've used them forever. Oh, yeah, do you like that logo? That's the same logo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we changed it. They don't really know, right? So it's all that recognition and subliminal kind of connections. That's the big thing with advertising is there's so much subliminalness. Subliminalness? I don't know if that's it. That it just, it has to connect with people. The same reason I have all these books and you probably have all your books is marketing is completely mind games games that's the wrong word that sounded sleazy it's like sales sales and marketing are kind of the same principle where each of them have a set of rules and they work weirdly like when you look at somebody and you have like an assumptive close right we'll talk sales real quick something i guess i know some about but if you say to somebody say i say to my 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 wife i want to go out to eat ice cream but I don't know if she wants to eat ice cream, which of course would never happen. She always want to eat ice cream. But I would say to her, I said, uh, "Hey, uh, we go to when we go to uh, get some uh, ice cream tonight. Are you you gonna get a, a cone, or are you thinking about a dish? Or uh, hey, uh, what uh, what ice cream is your favorite flavor? Right? What's 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 your favorite? What would you wish you had right now? Right? Or I go, oh man, I wish right now that I had this fill in the blank." right? Those are assumptive closes and it's putting a fact out there. If I said to my daughter, what, what flavor ice cream are you getting tonight? They'd be like, Oh gosh, uh, chocolate chip. I'm getting chocolate chip tonight. Now oh, it's a say it's a statement. It's a fact, right? It's the same concept in marketing. When you put a message out there, which all marketing is a message. What are you putting out there? What exactly are you selling? Cause nobody needs to be sold on window cleaning. Like the actual cleaning of the windows. Anybody who says window cleaning is going to get them clean windows. You can't be like, my name's Jersey and I clean the best, cleanest window ever. Look at how clean this puppy is. Yeah. That's not how you sell. That's not how you market. That's not how you create an ad. The ad is going to be something like, you know, do you love golf? Well, you know you love golf. There's nothing better than being out there when the weather finally hits and you're out on the golf course all weekend. But you have windows to clean. Well, let us help. Let us help you get some free time back in your life. I didn't sell window cleaning. I sold free time, right? We're a luxury business. What are you selling? You're, what you're selling is in the ad, not the actual service, right? So many people focus on, they want a billboard. They want to send a thing. Oh, look at this one. Oh, cool. There's a lot of bullet points. And they say, window cleaning, pressure washing, roof cleaning, siding washing, concrete cleaning, uh, roof cleaning. They have all this stuff. That's their whole ad. And then there's a picture of some million dollar house behind them. People get that and go, ah, maybe I don't need any of that. But if you put something out there and you, uh, I'll say one thing. I did an ad one time. It was called the gutter squirrel, my most successful ad that I've ever done. And it's a squirrel that is photoshopped 
with lines like a lion and it's standing. It just happens to be a squirrel on the edge of a gutter and it's like squeaking, you know, or whatever. And it just uh, says, beware of the gutter squirrel on the front. That's all it says. And on the back, it says, have no fear of the gutter squirrel. We can clean your gutters year round, blah, 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 something, whatever the thing is. People go, well, what are you selling? Gutter cleaning? Well, yeah. But what are you selling? You're selling this like image of a thing that doesn't have anything to do with your thing. It's like free time. If you're selling free time, you're not selling window cleaning. You just happen to be providing the free time because of the window cleaning. That's the same thing in advertising. You're creating an ad to sell something. Now, pain points, pain points are going to be it, right? It could either be creating happiness or alleviating unhappiness. No one wants to pick up. No one wants to clean out gutters. I hate gutters. I hate them so much. No one wants to clean out gutters. So if I go, you know what? Gutters are absolutely awful. Wouldn't it be nice to just sit back, watch TV, eat some popcorn, and not be stinky? I'm letting you, I'm selling you the the relief of not having to do gutters. The pain point of having to do gutters. Oh, I gotta get up there. Do you hate, you've seen these cheesy commercials. You've seen all the, the infomercials, right? And it's the premise is correct, even if they're horrible. You know? Tired of having to lug a ladder into the backyard with buckets? Oh, I can't do this. And the stuff falls all over and it's black and white. And they go, meh. By the way. You can watch a little animated part if you're on uh, YouTube. But anyway, they're doing it right. They're exaggerating it because they're drawing attention. But what they're doing is they're saying, don't you hate when you try to peel an egg and it doesn't peel? Well, yeah, I guess it's mildly annoying. Don't you hate having to put soap in a bucket and use a sponge when you're doing a car wash? Oh, they... It's just too overwhelming. Well, obviously it's all bigger, but that's what people say. Yeah, that's kind of a pain in the butt. Oh, they got a solution. Yeah, that's a pain in the butt. That's a solution, right? They do it for that way, that connection. You got to do it for the connection also. That's where ads come in. You find what you're doing with an ad, right? We're trying to get money. We're trying to have somebody hire us for our services, window cleaning, pressure washing, whatever it is you do. You want them to hire you. Get on your schedule and be a customer forever. What are you really selling? That's key. (laughs) That's key. And the big part about it is that a lot of us lose sight of what an ad does. And they're more like, oh man, look at this one. Look at this cool picture. No one wants to see a million dollar house and you cleaning the windows in a million dollar house. If you're selling them window cleaning... And they don't have a million dollar house. Now, the J uh, Camarero, I always butcher your last name. Sorry, bro. But like, he'll post giant houses. That's awesome, man. Those houses are so sick. But that's to other window cleaners. When I'm selling services, I want to have a house that's not that big. I want to have a house that's even smaller. Because when I look at it and go, well, if they can do that little house, eh, they might have a little trouble doing my house. But if you do a million dollar house on the ocean, and there's a million dollar view and you can see the Hollywood sign and 30 of your guys are on there with, and they look at their house and they're like, Ugh, man, my like 2000 square foot house is, I'm not calling those guys. They, they do big jobs. They don't want little jobs. Like you've offended somebody without even offending somebody. Now you have a smaller house that's in that picture that's relatable. And they go, that's me. I could do that. Yeah. Look at that house. That's a house just like mine. Be relatable. Understand what you're selling. What you're selling and do it across all the platforms. Split test the heck out of it. That's the only way you're going to be awesomer than you are right now. The only way I will let you be even more awesomer is by buying your supplies through me. So if you have not done so already, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Anyway, my number is 862-312-2020. Two six and yes, that is my cell phone. Text me, call me, whatever. I'd love to put orders in for you. That's how I make my chatter. Doesn't cost you anything extra, but it's that virtual high five of awesomeness. Plus, let me know and I'll get you a sticker, one of those uh, cool kids stickers, because you're officially certified. And hopefully, your year is absolutely epic. If you haven't done it already, again, shameless plug, because I have to shameless plug other stuff. 
go and get yourself the American Window Cleaner Magazine. Do it. Do it now. Because the Window Cleaner Ma American Window Cleaner Magazine actually comes with stickers. So if you want an awesome sticker board like mine, every single month comes with a sticker sheet. So not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. Here is a February sticker sheet. Sticker sheet. You want stickers? Why not? Get some stickers. Shameless plug time's over, guys. Go out there and uh, make sure you split test everything. Advertise the heck. Hopefully, you're making a billion dollars. But more importantly, hopefully, you're going to be happy.